Today, I'm going to be discussing a very crucial topic with us today, and that is Titan. And I'm, not, I'm also going to be sharing my experience as a Christian Titan for quite some years now. And I'm going to be encouraging you to start Titan and to be able to obtain the benefit that comes with Titan. I have been Titan for a very long time now, and I have seen the blessings of God. I've seen the mercy of God. I've seen the favor of God. I've seen God at work in various aspects of my life, especially in the area of finances and economy and businesses. I've seen the blessings increasing. I've seen wealth. I've seen prosperity. I've seen God does mighty things in my life to the glory and praise of his name. So I'm going to be sharing from my experience with you today on why you should tithe as a child of God. And also, I'm, we're going to be looking at what the Bible says on the subject of tithing because I know that there's a lot of, there are a lot of misconceptions out there on, on tithing. And a lot of Christians have even been taught that they should no longer pay tithe. It is, it is not godly. And I'm telling you, the word of God is ye and amen. The Bible says, forever, O Lord, that word is settled in heaven, it is settled. It doesn't matter who is teaching you. That is why you must grow as a child of God to know the word of God for yourself and to be able to obey God's word for yourself. You should be able to know what the Bible says is expected and is required of you to do, and you should be able to do them. This is It is in this that God is glorified. It is in this that you are mature. And this is where you get to have your own conviction. Your relationship with God comes to a point of conviction, not a point of assumption. You know that you know that this is what the Lord wants me to do and you are doing it. And the dividends, the benefit, the blessing that follows the obedience will be your portion. That is exactly what we are going to be discussing today. I also want you to understand that I have been through a lot of things in my life. I've, I've I've had various challenges and, and I'm going to be sharing some of them with you and how God intervened in my life, especially to the covenant of Titan. That's what I'm going to be sharing with us today. But before we go further, I want us to look at what the Bible says in the book of Malachi 3. Malachi 3 from, um, let's start from chapter, from verse 6. Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. The Bible says, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore you see the Sons of Jacob are not consumed. Then the chapter, uh, verse 7. Even from the death of your father, ye are gone away, away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me and I will return unto you, said the Lord of hosts. But you said, Wherein shall we return? Chapter, verse 8. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But you say, When have we robbed thee? In tithes and offering. Then verse 9. Ye are caused with the cause. For ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Then verse 10, Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, ye which said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall, be, there shall not be room enough to receive it. And in verse 11, he said, I will rebook the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast a fruit before time in the field. See the Lord of hosts. And verse 12, it says, And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land. See the Lord of hosts. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, I want you to understand from the scriptures that we just read now that this is the Lord himself speaking unto us through his word. And we are commanded to tithe. Now, the first question most people ask is that what is tithe in itself? especially for those who are not Christians who might be watching this video. Tithe is just the 10% of your income. 10% of your income, that is what a tithe is. And it becomes tight when you give it to God because a tithe belongs to God. And then you're actually paying your tithe. You're not giving to God what does not belong to God. Rather, you are giving to God what already belongs to God. You are just working in obedience and then the blessing of obedience follows you. I want you to know that as a Christian, and according to scriptures, there are three forces that open the heavens over you as a child of God. Number one is the force of prayer. The Bible says, For everyone that asks to receive it, they say, Call unto me, I will answer you. I will show you good about the things that you know not. Right? The Bible says, Ask and it shall be given, seek and it shall find, knock and it shall be opened. For everyone that asks to receive it. So the force of prayer is the first force that opened the heaven over the children of God. Then the second force that opened the heaven over the children of God is sacrifice. Sacrifice opens the heavens. 
And then the third force that opened the heaven over the children of God is called obedience. And that is very, very critical and very applicable in the region of Titan that we are addressing today. Obedience opens the heavens. So if you want the heaven upon your life, your finances, your business to be open, you have got to work in practical obedience. Praise the name of the Lord. You have to work in practical what? obedience. I'm going to be sharing with you some of the instances in my life where I've worked in obedience uh, into the prompting of God, both in my tithing and in, in other seed sowing and the benefits and the benevolence that I have reaped by those particular uh, ob uh, obedience uh, steps. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm going to start with this. There was some times ago in the past when I noticed that financially things were not good for me. As a matter of fact, I actually ran into debt. And subsequently, I'm going to be making a video on this channel on how the Lord delivered me from debt. Because I'm sure many believers out there are going to be willing to watch that video. And there are a lot of people that are in debt right now who probably think that they are not going to come out of it. But I'm here to tell you that you can come out of that debt because I came out of my home. I came out of my depth condition and if the Lord can make a way for me, I believe he can do the same thing for you because it's the same yesterday, it's the same today, it's the same forever. Praise the name of the Lord in the name of Jesus. God did mighty works in my life and trust me, I believe he's going to do the same thing for you in Jesus' name. Okay, so when I came into depth, uh, one of the things that helped me to come out very fast was my titan. Of course, I had the business I was doing, but the business was not really moving like that. So I began to pay my tithes faithfully. I was paying my tithe, no matter how small what is coming into my hand is because, you know, I'm actually paying debt. So what is left is not much. But for every sales I make, for every increase I have, I was paying my tithe. My, my tithe. Lo and behold, the heaven upon me was open. Before you know what, initially I was selling my goods to one uh, within one within my states. Then all of a sudden, the Lord began to bless my businesses. I began to send goods to other states, like from various states, customers were coming. And before you know what, blessing was coming. And that was how I was able to come out of debt. But I noticed that the increase and the blessing came when I began to pay my tithes. I noticed that the increase in patronage in sales began to happen when I became faithful in tithing yes every money that comes to my hand i give the 10 percent to god and the heaven was open upon me things began to take a, a precious turn around now let me give you an understanding why i choose to discuss the issue of tithing today and uh, 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 the story or the incident that led to this video today i'm going to share with you i have a friend of mine and uh, he has a website and I'm, I'm also a website designer and i have a blog as well so this guy is also a blogger like me. He has a blog and he makes money from the blog. And I used to work on his blog sometimes for him, you know, just to help him to earn and so on and so forth. So last month, if you're conversant with Google AdSense, Google AdSense would pay you um, a minimum of hundred dollars. So before you can before you can be paid of whatever it is that you have generated on Google AdSense your, on your Google AdSense account, either from your website or from your YouTube channel, it has to be hundred dollar and above. So last two months, my friend had, I think, for five dollars and that was in his balance. Then last month, he had ninety four dollars. So if everything is added together, it should be above. It should be almost one fifty dollar and above. So and um, on the on the first of July, that's the day it's going to be added to the balance that will make it to be like one fifty and above and that's supposed to be paid on the 21st of, of 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 this july you know all that he has earned in, in the month of june is supposed to be paid on the 21st of july okay so when it was first of july he contacted me and told me that he checked his balance and instead of him to make something like 150 dollar all he met there was around 85 dollars so that means gogo has deducted almost 55 dollars from his earning so I just thought it was a, probably a technical error or something. But as I was going to church, I think I was heading out to church, that should be two days ago, the Spirit of God spoke to me and said, call him and ask him that, is he faithful in his tithing? That the deduction that happened is not a technical error. It was because he is not a faithful tither. Now, I know he's a Christian and I know he loved the Lord. So I called him and I said, my brother, I want to ask you a sincere question and I need you to answer me the truth. 
Are you a tither? Are you faithful? When last did you pay your tithes? Beloved, lo and behold, he told me that the last time he paid his tithe was three months ago. And also, while I was in church yesterday, he called me and he told me how that um, he wanted me to send him some money. So I knew that he, he, he doesn't even have money to eat or anything whatsoever like that, you know. I said, this, something is wrong with my brother. What's going on? You know, I knew that he was really broke. So I contacted him and he told me that even three months ago that he paid his tithe. And I told him, I said, the Lord said to me that the deduction you had in your account is because you are not tithing. You are not under an open level. One of the things that tithing does is to bring us under an open level. It's not enough that you should uh, be doing businesses and believe that by the virtue of your business you are doing, you are going to be blessed. That might not be 100% correct. You need to acknowledge God and honor God with your resources that come from your business. Then the heaven upon your business will be open and then you'll be able to flow in the realms of the blessing and then you'll be able to experience the favor of God and increase. The Bible says, Ye shall eat in plenty and shall glorify the name of the Lord thy God who has dealt wondrously with thee and my people shall never be ashamed. So if you're going to experience plenty, increase, influence, favor, blessings, wealth and prosperity, you cannot remove the equation of tithing out of the subject. That is honoring God with the tenth percent of your increase. That means if you are earning $100,000 in a month, for instance, $10,000 in that particular income belongs to God. Then the 90 belongs to you. That is what tithe is all about. And it makes for open level. Then look at the situation of my friend. I talk about the father his, his earnings were deducted. That is a symbol of the devourer as a hawk. Even though it came from a company anyway. But when it comes to economic situations, even though they have spiritual roots, it can happen anyhow. It will take a spiritual person to discern what is the a, a factor that is causing these losses to happen. Praise the name of the Lord. Look at what the Bible says in the scripture that we read. It says that in chapter in, in verse 9 and verse 8, will the man rob God, but yet ye have robbed me, but you say, When have we robbed thee in tithes and offering? And um, verse 9 says, Ye are caused with a cause, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. So this is exactly what happens when you don't pay your tithes. There is a cause. That comes upon you and i'm not trying to threaten you but the bible says so and how do you know if this cause is at work things will not be working everything will be difficult you might even have a lot of businesses going on but no sales no increase no favor no patronage all your contracts are not going through because you are not under the blessing so how do you come under the blessing honor the lord with your resources honor the lord with your substance and then the heaven will open i had a testimony from a pastor Benny he, he told us of a story of how that the church was in uh, in debt of 1.5 million dollars uh, having to do with their tv bills that they needed to pay for their uh the tv program that they were running and he said he was praying to god lord we don't have a means to pray this money how do we pay and he said he had a voice of god the lord said to him that he should sow a seed of one million dollars to the ministry of real bonky where Bonke was coming to Nigeria then for a, a, a crusade. So he saw uh, a seed of, he was asked by the Lord, the Spirit of God inspired him to sow a seed of $1 million to Real Bonke's ministry. And he said that he doesn't have the $1 million as, as when God was instructing him. So he called Bonke and told him, this is what the Lord said. So we're going to be sowing $1 million into your ministry for your crusade in Nigeria. And he said, Bonke blessed him. And he said, Benny, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. And that was it. And he said that he asked the account um, to transfer, I think, $300,000 yes, dollars to Bonke's ministry. Because that was all they were left with. But they obeyed what God has said. And he said that he invited... Um, um, Forgotten the name of the minister he invited to come and anchor a program for him. And the minister was also meant to raise funds for him. And the minister came on the platform and said to the whole congregation, your pastor is in trouble. Help him. Benny is in trouble. Help him. That was all he said. And Benny said, in a space of one week, 
they got more than $1.5 million. And he told the account officer to transfer the remaining $700,000 to Riyad Bonke's ministry. And that was how the Lord took care of their own debts in a space of one week. Where am I going is that? Seed sowing and honoring God with your tithes, with your substance, your offering, it works, it compels and commands the favor of God, the blessing of God and the increase of God upon you, upon your household and upon your businesses. Now, I know a lot of people ask questions like this. How does the how does tithing open the windows of heaven upon me? And add, the Bible talks about the fact that, let's see what the Bible says about that. It says in chapter in the Malachi 3 verse 10, Bring ye all tithe into the store house that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now here with here the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, that is, if I will not open unto you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there, there shall not be room enough to receive it. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, the question is, when the Bible said that I'm going to open the window of heaven and pour you out a blessing, and there will be no room enough to receive it. The question most people ask is that, are money going to be falling down from heaven? Will vehicles be falling down from heaven? Will cars be falling down from heaven? Now, the answer is a capital no. Money doesn't fall down from heaven. Cars doesn't fall down from heaven. And the does not fall down from heaven. What the Bible is talking about here is the rain, the flow, the free flow of divine idea. Insight flows to your mind. Direction flows to your mind. And let me tell you something. It does not just come with the insight and the direction alone. The favor you need to experience that which God has communicated to you is being released. Those that would help to fulfill that which you have had, they will come your way. I'm going to share a practical example. And that was last year. I was going to start a business last year and I needed 70,000 euros for the business and I don't have it. And I was in the church in a service and then I had the word of God, the man of God was preaching and then I I, I gave, I sold, I sold the money that was with me in that service and that was all that was with me in that particular service. I sold that money and I was telling God, Lord, I'm trusting you to make a way for me and to make provisions available to me in this season i'm trusting you to do something in my life now before that service there has been a man that the spirit of god has told me to go and meet that man is going to help me financially he's going to give me the money i need now in my mind i was like this man is a married man he has a family he probably has his own needs and where would he even get his spare money to give me but the spirit of god kept telling me to go so after the service it was a tuesday service then on wednesday i was coming from somewhere now, as I dropped from the from the vehicle, I saw the man that God has been telling me to go and meet that is going to help me. I saw him driving. So I waved. Immediately he saw me. He parked. And I asked him, sir, how are you doing? How is everything? How is the family? Are you going home? He said, yes. I entered into his vehicle and then he drove me to his house. Praise the name of the Lord. When we got to his house, you know, we we're very excited. The both of us to see one another. It's been a long time and all that. So we got talking. Then I said, sir, and something I want to discuss with you, and it's very important. The Spirit of God has been telling me to come and meet you for this thing for a while now, but I'm just not convinced or I'm not comfortable asking you for this favor. He said, no, what is it? Tell me, tell me, let me know. So I told him, I said, I want to start a business and it's going to go a long way to help me and stuff like that. I was explaining everything to him and he said something. He said, that was, now remember this event is happening on Wednesday. The service I attended was a Tuesday where I said I gave all all the money that was left with me, I gave it to God in that service. So he said, he asked me, how much do you need? I said, I need 70,000 naira. He said, okay, wait for me, I'm coming. He entered into his, into his bedroom. Now, before he left, I told him, I said, sir, please, even if it is just 50,000, you can give me out of the money. Because I was just, I, I, I guess I was full of unbelief. I was just like, this man might not have this money. And even if he has the money, he probably has his own need. He wouldn't be able to release it to me and stuff like that, you know. I said, sir, even if you'll not be able to give me the entire money, can you give me 50000 I can go and get the remaining myself and just find my way around it and all those things. 
Uh, I was probably trying to help God, but you know, God is wiser and is greater. He's the Almighty. He doesn't need us to help him. He's always equal to the task on his own. So the man laughed and said, okay, wait for me, I'm coming. He entered into his bedroom. Beloved, lo and behold, he came back to me in the sitting room and he handed over to me a check of 70,000 naira. And he said to me, go to the bank tomorrow and cash it out and start your business. <sighs> My brethren, it was like a dream. And do you know why? I think for like a few months, I've been praying for that provision to come. I've been telling God, Lord, I want to start this business. I need you to provide. But this particular Tuesday, I went to the house of God. And I dropped my seed. I, I, dropped, the, I, I dropped the money that was with me. And then the following day, the heaven opened in a greater way. Now that business has moved from glory to glory. To a bigger remit has given me bigger, bigger returns, much more bigger than whatever it is that I used to start it. That is the power of paying your tithe. It opens the heaven upon you, then it compels favor around you to you. It compels the heart of men to you. You just walk practically in the favor of God without struggle. You just walk in the in, practically in the favor of God without sweat. It just happens without any, you know, effort. That is the beauty. Of paying tithes. Then another benefit of paying tithes according to scripture. He said, I will rebook the devourer for your sake. And it shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your fine cast eye fruits before time, the time and the feed. Share the Lord of hosts. Now, praise the name of the Lord. When the Bible is talking about devourer, devourer is real. Devourer is that thing that always eat up your finances. Some people will be like, when they, whenever they collect money, they don't even know how to spend it. The money just fly away. I have a friend who is currently working in a good place in Nigeria. And she's single. She's not married yet. And she earns more than 150000 naira per month. And for the fact that she's single, she has been working there for the past five years. And she has been paid several millions of naira, of naira over those five years. You know, if I'm to sum up the, the, the salary together. But guess what, my beloved? This person does not even have up to 100,000 naira savings as I'm talking to you right now. And what is the problem? The simple answer is this. She does not pay tight. She doesn't pay tight. She's just, it's almost as though she will collect the money. She doesn't really know how the money goes. That is the operation of Devora. She doesn't know how she spent the money. The whole money just fly away. It kept flying away because you are not giving God the, the portion that belongs to him. When you don't give God a portion that belongs to him, the remaining will not make sense. We cannot rob God. We cannot outsmart God. Praise the name of the Lord. I heard of a man as well who told me that anytime he doesn't pay his tithe, he said he ends up paying almost times two or times three of that tithe that particular month on his vehicle. That is the vehicle we developed for. In fact, one of the worst experiences he ever had that he told me was a situation whereby rats. Can you imagine rats? Rats went and caught the one of the tire, one of the one of the wires in the vehicle. Please, when does when when does a wire become something that rats are consuming? When did rat begin to hit cables? But when Devora wants to have expression, it can come through enemies. And it's not enough to say I rebook the Devora. No, why you can make declaration is not a bad thing to do actually. You work it out in a in, in what we call a covenant practice. When you pay your tithes, there is an automatic rebook on the devourer in your life. When you pay, when you honor God with your tithe, it's an automatic effect. I met somebody like that should be last year, no, I think early this year rather, and he told me that he's heavily in debt. And the first question I asked him is that when last did you pay your tithe? And he said something to me. He said, "My brother." The past five months now, I've not been tithing. I said, why? He said, because I'm in debt. All the money that's coming to my, my hand, I'm using it to pay debt. And I told him, I said, let me tell you something. I have been in debt before. And to the glory of God, I'm out of debt. I know how it works. I told him, if you want the heaven to remain open for you, so that there will be enough blessing to pay up that debt, you must be paying your tithe. Otherwise, you will never have sufficiency. It will never be enough to come out of that debt. So, but if you want God to bring you a level of financial favor and fortune that can swallow up the debts, 
you have to be paying your tithes. It will bring you on the payroll of God's favor. And the favor can wipe off the debt in one day. Yes, the favor of God can bring debt to an end in one day. Praise the name of the Lord. So, I want to encourage us believers today. I know the economy is not easy. I know times are difficult. But if you want to experience economic empowerment in these last days, one of the criteria to experience that reality is by tithing. If you want the heaven upon you, upon your business to be open, especially in this generation whereby even the businesses that are great and are booming before are crashing down, if you want it to, to re, if you want yours to remain perpetually under an open heaven, one of the conditions that must be met is that you must be faithful in your tithing. Praise the name of the Lord. And let me also correct this ideology. There are many people that say, I'm going to be faithful when I'm earning like maybe 500,000, 1 million naira, 1 million dollars. Let me tell you something. The Bible said that either is faithful in little, is also faithful in, in big. That is, either is faithful in little, is also faithful in much. If you cannot pay a tithe of 500,000, if a tithe of 50,000, now, now you are collecting 50,000 naira. And your tithe in for fifty thousand is supposed to be five thousand. If you cannot pay a tithe of five thousand now that you are collecting fifty thousand, you will never be able to pay a tithe of fifty thousand when you start collecting five hundred thousand. So if you want God to entrust the wealth of the kingdom into your hand, and you want God to bless you in this in 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 a major way, then make sure that the portion that belongs to God does not slip in your hand. I have also out of instances. I have quite a number of friends, even pastors' friends. Who told me how that they increase their tithe from ten percent to twenty percent, even though the 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 minimum or the least amount the Bible mentions scripturally is ten percent. But there are people that work with God to a particular level and say, "Lord, you are greater than ten percent for me." It is cheating giving you ten percent. So they decided on their own. This is not something that was meant to be general, but based on their personal revelation and their personal conviction and relationship with God. They choose to increase their own tithe to 20%. Lo and behold, the Lord bless them immersely. The Lord bless them in no small way. I'm going to be sharing another story in another video on one of the things that happened to someone that decided to be paying God 90%. But I'm not going to be sharing it in this video because I don't want this video to be too long. Praise the name of the Lord. So, the Lord opened the windows of heaven and blessed them abundantly because of their obedience. Please... Don't let the devil rob you of the blessing of God. You cannot serve God well when you are not blessed. You cannot serve God well when you are in debt. You cannot serve God well when you are financially struggling. One of the criteria that makes for your financial freedom and liberty is, to, is when you are faithful in tithing. Tithing opens the window of heaven upon you and it releases the blessing of God upon you. And I pray for someone that is watching me today that the grace to be faithful and to serve God with your tithe is released today in the name of Jesus. And the devil will not rob you of your blessing anymore in the name of Jesus. Let me also say this. Tithe is another way you prove to God that you have conquered money. The Bible says that you cannot serve God and mammon. You either you serve one and despise the other. So the only way to conquer money, the love for money, and an any desire for money, your, your, the craving for money is to use money to serve God. By paying your tithe, paying your offering, you are telling God that, God, you are above money in my life. My life is not worshipping money. Rather, my life will worship you. That is what you are telling God when you pay your tithe. Lord, I am honoring you and I am placing you above money. Money always wants to be worshipped. You are the one that will refuse to worship money. That I would rather worship the living God and not money. And when you are like that, money will be afraid of you and you will have abundance of it under your control because you are not worshipping money but you are worshipping God and I pray that the grace to worship God is released upon your life today in the name of Jesus now let me say the balance because it's very important that I say this particular balance in this video today please understand that you cannot be a tighter and be lazy the blessing of God comes upon the works of your hand let me show you what the Bible says in that Malachi again let's see what the Bible says there the Bible says, bring your tithe into the storehouse, that will be meat in my house. And prove me not here with said the Lord of God. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall be not room enough to receive it. 
Now look at the next verse. And I will remove the devourer for your sake. And it shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field. Say the Lord of hosts. There are two points I want to bring out there. The first one is, I will, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. That's the first point I want to bring out. The second point is that, I will remove the divine for your sake and it shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. And I shall your vine cast a fruit before time in the field. That's Malachi 11, Malachi 10 to 12, to 11 rather. Malachi 10 to 11. Where I'm going is this. The Bible says that there, it will prove me now, here, it, here we say the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the window of heaven and pour you in a blessing. I will pour you out a blessing. The blessing is looking for the work of your hand. The blessing is looking for what you are doing with your mind, with your hand. You have to be doing something upon which the blessing will come. The blessing is always looking for your, your, your endeavor, your business, your fight, your anything you are doing productively, positively, legitimately to earn money. Anything you are doing as, as, as an exchange to be rewarded, your skill. So you cannot be idle and you are paying tight and you say you are not getting rewarded. There will be no basis for your reward to come if you are not engaging your mind and your hand productively in a business in providing services in providing solution to one problem or the other that is what business is all about so there are people that are like okay i pay tight but i'm not getting the reward the reward of all time comes through the work of your hand it comes through your businesses as a matter of fact the tight increase your idea on what next to do so you can have one business before and god began to multiply your businesses by giving you new ideas and new inventions and new industries to invest your money into that's going to increase your wealth increase your blessings so don't let us have this mentality of tightening and doing nothing if you're not doing anything if you're not providing any solution to the world there is no basis upon which the blessings of god will find expression in your life you must have something you are doing for the blessing to find expression. So it's not enough to just be a tighter. Make sure you are engaging your mind. Make sure you are engaging your hand. You must be productive. You must not be hiding. Part of one of the kingdom criteria or the kingdom requirement for the blessing, for the wealth and prosperity of God, is that you must be blessed. You must be uh, productive. You must be working. For instance, the Bible talks about Abraham. And we all claim the blessings of Abraham. And Abraham was our father, and he was even the first to tithe. Yes, and that can be found in Hebrews 7, uh, verse 1. Yes, Abraham was the first person to tithe. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, Abraham was working. He had male servants, female servants. He had thousands of cattle. He had sheep and goats. He had a lot of farming investments. So if the blessing will find expression, there has to be something upon which the blessing will come. The blessing does not come on nothing. The blessing does not come or nothing. Please let us have this understanding as believers. You cannot be lazy and experience the blessing of God. You cannot be lazy and experience the blessing of God. The blessing comes upon what you are doing. So you've got to be doing something. The blessing does not come to the lazy. And I'm praying for someone that is listening to me here that the business idea, the insight you need, the direction you need that will bring you out of whatever it is that you are going through, that will make your name to be heard in your generation, is released right now in the name of Jesus. Your voice shall be heard and you shall become successful. The Lord will empower you. He will grant you wisdom and ideas. He will show you what to do that will make you great and that will make your name great in the name of Jesus. I want to believe we have learned a lot of things from this video today. Please, if you do have any question, do well to drop your question. I'll be available to answer your question. And if you love this video, please do well to click on the like button, subscribe to this channel so as to receive more edifying Christian content like this. I'm going to be making even much more videos on the issue of Titan um, beyond just what we have discussed today. Much more videos coming our way. And I believe that it will be for our own spiritual growth and edification. My name is Pastor Matthew. It's nice meeting you all. And the Lord bless you. Thank you for watching my video today. And I will see you in the next video. God bless you all in Jesus' name.